Hi there, Facebook land. It's uh, Rob Flux here from Property Developer Network. Uh, this is Tony Meredith. Hello. Uh, and this is Sunil Manil. Uh, and we have just finished the Psychology of Property Development event here in Melbourne. We're currently sitting here in the Virgin Lounge. Uh, Paul Sunil is actually flying Qantas, but uh, he's come, decided to. He's come to get the free dinner at the at the Virgin Lounge. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, courtesy of uh, Tony and myself. Uh, and our regular frequent flyer statuses. Um, I guess our topic tonight is all about uh, having property development as a side hustle. But before we get there, uh, we've had, I guess, quite a big weekend with the Psychology of Property Development uh, weekend. Uh, Sunil has been the chief button pusher uh, doing the videography in the back end. Sunil's actually from our Sydney group, uh, from our Sydney community, and, and flown all the way here to Melbourne to try and help us out for the weekend. Uh, second time you've actually sat the event, Sunil? Yes. Uh, first so time last year. First time last year. So, uh, first time last year you got a number of, uh, I guess, epiphanies that came out of the process. Yep. Uh, so, you want to tell our crowd what some of those epiphanies were? Uh, it it kind of cleared the way for my limiting beliefs. Uh, I was already on a journey on property development. We had a site and we were working through getting the DA and uh, progress into construction but I think it was at the time where we were in the middle of the downturn, market downturn and uh, we were at crossroads whether to sell the site at a loss or continue um, but it was also, I know it's off topic, we talk about property development as a hustle, side hustle but that was my main gig and I was uh, in desperate need to find other deals, other sites uh, but part of my limiting beliefs at that point was I couldn't find money partners or JV partners or I didn't know how to approach them and, uh, and ask for money. I think it's more cultural uh, setback from my side. But working through that weekend, uh, I met a few JV partners and money partners at the event who want to now do deals with me and uh, go into JVs. So it was huge and I, and I think this weekend uh, was a, a realization as part of that uh, I've shifted from one full-time job to the property development as another job and I need to change that mindset and, and look at it as a vehicle to to get me uh, what's more valuable is time with family and, and doing things that I love and enjoy. Not that I don't love property development, uh, I love it and I help, love helping people along that's on the similar journey. And uh, apologies for the announcements in the background. As I said, we're actually in the Virgin Lounge uh, and having, uh, I guess, flights being announced over the top of us all the time. But uh, I guess you had that epiphany last time and we were just talking literally a couple of seconds ago uh, about the new epiphany you had this time, which is strangely on topic for tonight's uh, for, night, for tonight's topic. So tonight's topic is having property development as a side hustle and we, we spoke very in much detail about actually turning it into a business during, I guess, the, uh, the weekend. The weekend, yes. Uh, and what was your epiphany out of that, mate? Um, I guess from my perspective, I looked at it as, uh, as another job, you know. Uh, I didn't look at it as, as, a, as a vehicle to take to get me to where my goals are, which is ultimately having that time to to spend with the family, which uh, uh, you know you miss out when you got a day job as a corporate world. Um, now I work from home and I'm getting that time, but I'm still looking at property development as uh, as another job, which I think you know this weekend was a realization that I need to change that mindset and look at it as how I'm going to set myself free. From that and using the development as side hustle. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I can see a lot of people that are coming on board and they're all saying hi, so I'll say hi back to most of them. So we got uh, <laughs> Vanessa, we got Scott, uh, we've got uh, Deborah. Uh, Deborah, who spent the whole weekend with us, is uh, back on live. So hi, Deb, thank you very much, appreciate that. We got Rado, we got Emily. Hi, Emily. Uh, Emily is saying hi. Um, uh, got Jason, we got Matt Campbell, we got Adrian, we got Ray, we got Noel, and a couple of others whose uh, name uh, isn't whizzing past. So uh, I guess at this point I'm going to bring uh, this gentleman into the conversation. Oh, okay. Uh, hello, Tony. How are hello, you? Hello, Rob. How are you going? Uh, hello, Tunnel. <laughs> long time no see. <laughs> long time no see. Uh, big weekend, mate. I guess. Huge. Uh, we had, 
I think, 30 people in the room. Correct. Uh, which for Melbourne, uh, when we tried to run the exact same event last year, we had one. One. One person. Uh, and that person, I guess, unfortunately, we can't run an entire event on one person. <laughs> um, not, not unless it's an extraordinary price ticket. So, uh, so thankfully, they actually came to us in Brisbane that time around. Yeah. Uh, but as a result of that, that's kind of made us bring our community down to Melbourne, uh, and that's our uh, monthly community uh, monthly network meetup yeah. uh, every single month now. Um, next month, uh, I guess just for logistics purposes, uh, Tony is actually going to run the show here in Melbourne rather than me. Um, my daughter is turning 18 and I'm, I need to be a responsible parent and uh, I guess look after an uh, 18 year old who may be in all sorts of... Um, uh, all sorts of array at that, that stage, I'm, I'm sure. So uh, I've always wanted to be your stunt double, Rob, so I'm, <laughs> so I'm so excited about being able to achieve that objective in October. Uh, hello, Emily. She's saying hello to me. Uh, so hello, how are you? Uh, it's a shame we weren't here this weekend, but we'll look forward to seeing you in October. Uh, look, we had an amazing uh, couple of days, uh, didn't we? So um, it's a real privilege for us to be able to see people come in on a Saturday morning of a two-day event, bit unsure around what is in store for them, a little bit of trepidation, and to see them then start to embrace the program, warm into the program, and really grow. Uh, you know, and by the time they leave, they're all feeling inspired uh, and ready to get out there and take some action. And yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a real privilege for me, and I know it is for you as well. Mike. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we spent quite a bit of time uh, over the weekend on, I guess, the two sides of... of uh, entry so one is the mindset to actually unlock some of those limiting beliefs and actually get them to to be taking the action uh, and we also get them trying to work on developing their strategy uh, and actually building a roadmap uh, to try and uh, do that roadmap to get a financial freedom through a five-year property action plan and so that's uh, a daunting task to try and take on in two days yeah, it is. Uh, and so for for some they grasp the concept really well for others They've got the concept and the, and the framework and they've got some homework to do to actually complete. Yeah. Um, but the I guess the whole intent of that outcome is really the theme of tonight, uh, which is, I guess, having property development as a side hustle. And that's where most of, uh, I guess, the people who come, I guess, into our community actually start is they have a day job uh, and they start with property development uh, in a part-time type capacity. And yeah. typically it's somewhere between 10 and 15 hours a week. Yeah. Uh, and so it's how do we, I guess, get them to get to the point where that side hustle is actually getting to the point where it can actually earn as much money as mm. their day job. Yeah. Uh, and then when they've done that a couple of times and done that in a repeated fashion, mm. built up a little bit of an nest egg, how they can then turn that into a day job. Mm -hmm. And then when they turn, as Sunil has just touched on, so Sunil, that has what, was, what he has actually done. Uh, and then take that one step further and then say, how do we now turn that into, uh, I guess, a, a, a business that is going to generate us passive cash flow. And so it's a staged process in, in the mechanism. Uh, and most of us start with that side hustle in mind. And apologies, you should see how wide these chairs are. They are so... And so, it, I don't think we can fit all three of us in at the same time. Oh, yes, we can. Oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> and my wife is Facebook messaging me on the side, so I'm just going to uh, throw that away. Sorry, darling, I'm just going to ignore you for now. I will touch base uh, very soon, I promise. Um, so, I guess, with that side hustle in mind, mm. a lot of people find that really daunting right up front because they don't have the skills, yep. they don't have the, the confidence, they don't have the time. Uh, and so a lot of the mechanisms that we need to do to unlock that right up front is firstly, how do we find the time? And, and Tony, you and I give, give our guys a time audit for them to go through and, uh, and unlock a bunch of time that uh, is always there, but they don't realise is there. So maybe you want to touch on that a little. Well, I'd actually go a step before that, and that is why do they want to do it in the first place? So it's not easy. It's not easy having a full-time day job, uh, juggling family responsibilities. Uh, if you don't have a family, but you might be juggling social responsibilities, uh, and then trying to come up with, as you said, say 10 to 15 hours. Why is it important? Why is it that you want to do it? So that would be the very first place that I'd start uh, and get really deeply connected 
with that and we go through a process. The process is not um, our process, it's one that we've uh, uh, copied from somewhere else. It's called Ikigai, it's spelt I-K-I-G-A-I and it's Japanese for reason for being. And so we take the students through that uh, over the weekend and that's all about understanding what's your why, what's your reason for being. That's the starting point. From there it's about then starting to understand what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want? What do you think you can get from property development? Uh, and then as you said, it's about recognizing um, what amount of time or how much time have I got to devote to this? And there's two things with time. One is quantity, that is how much time do I have? And the second is quality, that is with the time that I've got, am I maximizing it to its fullest potential? And uh, so yeah, they're the two things that people need to consider. Absolutely.